Hey friends, welcome back to Survival Dispatch. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to modify a frog gig so it fits in your pack easier. And it's also much, much easier to attach to a makeshift pole that you can just cut out of any sapling in the woods. Now the first thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to flatten out your gig because it comes kind of in this cone shape. Um, flattening it is gonna make it much easier to attach to your, your gig pole. One way of doing that is just putting it on the edge of a workbench kind of like this whacking it gently with the hammer until it comes out flat. But my preferred way to do it is actually put it in a bench vise. So pretty much just open up the jaws of your bench vise. This isn't rocket science. Open up the jaws of your bench vise and then slowly start squeezing it down until you get it flat like this. And this is gonna make it much easier to attach to a, a pole, just a simple sapling that you'll cut down in the woods with a pocket knife. I've kind of got my eyeball on this one right here. This looks like a maple sapling maybe an inch or so in diameter, and that one will get the job done. Now you're looking for something relatively straight. Straight is good, but it doesn't have to be flawless. And around here, it's pretty difficult to find anything perfectly straight anyway, so. So anytime you're selecting a gig pole, you want it to be at least as tall as you are or taller because if I should happen to slip and fall in the mud and the muck that I'm traipsing through after these frogs, it could very easily get me right in the face and that's a, that's a, that's a no-go for, for any situation. So I want it to be at least as tall as me. I like mine somewhere around eight feet, give or take. This one's a little bit short, for, but for demonstration purposes, it's gonna work just fine. Now all I have to do is just split, split the end of this to receive my gig. And I'll do that with my multi-tool here. If you're ever gonna baton a multi-tool or any kind of uh, folder. You need to be very, very gentle because you can damage the locking mechanism. But I am just going to barely tap this thing to get myself a split. And once I get that thing split open, don't have to go very far, just a few inches like that. Once I've got it split, hope you can see that. Take that out. And now all I have to do is insert my gig into the opening, center it up a bit, and then lash it on there. And I'll do that with just the cordage that I have in my pocket. I always keep about 10 feet or so of paracord in my pocket, just for whatever reasons you might have, tying stuff down in the back of the truck. Um, lashing gigs on the end of poles, who, who knows? But very simple way that I'll lash this on here. There's probably a million ways to do this, but this is just one way that I like to do it, is I hold my finger on a short section of the line that's running parallel to the um, actual pole itself. I'll hold that on here, I'll wrap it around and over top of itself. And after I do that twice, it locks it in place and it won't go anywhere and I can really start cranking on it. And then I'll just twist the gig pole, wrapping it over itself, wrapping over the line, and I'll just continue on and I'll keep that relatively straight running down the center of the gig pole and I'll just keep wrapping it around. And because I don't wanna cut my cordage because there's no reason to, I'm just gonna keep wrapping this thing until I run out of cordage. So once I get to the end of my line here, I'm just gonna take the last couple of wraps and I'm gonna go over top of my finger. Take it here, I'm gonna go over top of my finger the last two wraps and then I'm going to insert the end of my line through that space that I've created with my finger and then slowly start pulling it tight and that will cinch down upon itself and it will not come undone until I want it to. I mean it may loosen up over time eventually but you can always reach in here and grab the tag in and snug it up a bit more. No big deal. Um, but it's also really really easy to get undone and then you can take that gig right back off and put it back in your pack or your pocket or whatever. But that's a really, really secure connection and that's not gonna come off no matter how big that bullfrog you got is. All right, so now that we figured out how to modify our gig and make it easier to carry and secure to our gig pole, let's talk about how to protect ourselves from these pokey ends. You don't want this just kind of rolling around in your pocket or in, the, in your pack somewhere. So we need to make a sheath for it of some sort. Now there's lots of different ways that we can go about this. We can make a sheath out of uh, cardboard and duct tape, which is pretty simple and pretty easy, but if it gets wet and it kind of falls apart after a little while. But what I like to do is use some recycled PVC, which is what I'm gonna show you here in just a second. 
use a heat gun to melt it down and it essentially makes a kydex sheath for it that's going to work really really well I recently returned from a rescue mission in South Florida to get my grandma out of there. If you haven't checked out that video, you definitely should because it's a pretty good one. Um, but um, I tried to think of everything, you know, I tried to think outside the box, inside the box, and, and think of everything that I may need and all the issues and struggles that I may encounter on that trip um, due to this virus that's going around. Um, but undoubtedly I forgot something and undoubtedly if luckily it went smoothly but undoubtedly if something was to go awry there would be something I wish I would have had um, and this last issue of the survival dispatch insider was all about being on the move and how ironic that I read the articles after after the trip and if I had read that article before it would have helped me remember such simple things like uh, a can of fix a flat, you know, that could have been a deal breaker if I, if I didn't have it, you know, if I, if I had gotten a flat and a spare wasn't available or was, if I didn't ha if I hadn't checked the spare, if it was flat or, or whatever, you know, things happen. Um, or, or, you know, just a, a way to jumpstart my own vehicle, you know, one of those portable power packs that you can hook up to a battery and jumpstart your own vehicle. That would have been great. And I, I have access to all those things. I have those things and I could have brought them. I just, you know, wasn't thinking. And that's what's so great about the Survival Dispatch Insider is that it's potentially just a reminder to do some of the things that you haven't been doing. And if you're not already subscribed to it, you should definitely do it. Is It's definitely worth the investment. But let's continue on here. So I've got my sheath pretty much made. It's working pretty good. It fits really nice, secure on there. It doesn't come off. Um, I pinched it down with the vise. So it's closed on this one end. And now all I'm really gonna do is just kind of dress it up on the grinder and get rid of these sharp edges, sharp corners, so it'll go in and out of a pack easier, in and out of a pocket. <laughs> So here is essentially the finished product. Slides in nice and easy, very secure fit, doesn't come out. Easily can put that in your pocket or in your pack and it's gonna protect you from getting speared, which is, in my opinion, a good thing. Well guys, I really appreciate you joining me for this video. And if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, make sure you do, I really appreciate it, it helps me out. So with this, little tool here, I can potentially procure, procure myself a few calories and add to the stew pot. Now I have no illusions of living off of wild foods. I think that it's, it's definitely a, a fairy tale that we're just gonna go out there with our AR-15 and pop a couple deer and live off the land. It just doesn't work that way. The deer population will be annihilated in a very, very short period of time if the grocery store should shut their doors with no intentions of opening back up. And it is amazing to me how much money people spend on gear and flashlights and guns and ammo and how little foodstuffs they have set aside. Um, 
I was one of those, you know, I, did, I did, didn't think about it. And after a, a recent experience where I had to live off the land, off of wild foods for about a month and starved, um, uh, it's opened my eyes. I lost 22 pounds in a little less than a month. And what that does to you is, is eye opening. It is just this st starving is not a necessarily a painful thing. It is a slow, boring, um, lethargic way to go. Um, it, it you, you want to get up and go do the things that need to be done, but you just physically can't. And you have about two weeks, give or take, to figure things out. And if you're not giving your body the calories it needs to do the work that you need to do within that roughly two week period, it's pretty much game over because you're not gonna have the energy needed to do those, those necessary tasks of life, whether it be carrying five gallon buckets of water from the creek to the house to flush your toilet or um, going out and hunting. You're just not gonna have the energy to do it and, it's, and it is a pitiful, pitiful feeling um, to be in that state and I don't wish it upon anyone. Um, so hopefully this situation with the coronavirus is an eye-opening experience for us all that we need to have some foodstuffs set aside for that rainy day. And when I say some, I mean a lot because uh, you know a pantry worth of food is only gonna last your family so long. If those grocery stores don't open their doors back up, we're gonna all be in a very dire situation and hungry people are dangerous people. And I just think that that's something that we need to learn from this coronavirus experience is that um, food is life. Calories are life. And without it, we'd have some tough times ahead. So thanks for joining in guys and we'll see you on the next one.